mornings, turn on the fun, excitement, and adventures of all your favorite pals. We bind the works of the enemy. We bind the works of the flesh. We bind the works of the devil. I'm here today with because I had a dramatic dream last night about the Squid Spirit. It is a demonic spirit, but it starts with a mindset or a mental stronghold. But she looked like more like a gorilla woman. The night is the night where we are going to be talking about the spirit and exposing the spirit of Leviathan. So in the name of Jesus, I command every diabolical plan of the enemy to leave you now. Not today, devil. Tonight is the night where we are going to be talking about the spirit and exposing the spirit of Leviathan. Now, from Aquaman's brain, telepathic emanations fan out through the deep. We're not just going to be talking about this demonic spirit that every one of us have encountered. Yo, leave him alone. We're talking. I've encountered it many times, but we're going to be giving you strategy on how to overcome the spirit of Leviathan. Because I'm bad, bad, come on, come on. Bad, bad, really, really bad. You know I'm bad, I'm bad, you know, you know, bad, bad, really, really bad. You know I'm bad, I'm bad. Come on, come on, you know, bad, bad, really, really bad. And the whole world is the answer just right. Just tell, just tell you once again, who's bad? Friend, I'm telling you, there is a spirit that is lurking and that is dwelling right now. It is alive and well in the earth. And that is the spirit of Leviathan. I've dealt with this spirit so many times. And thus, I turn back the invasion of the inevitable. Oftentimes, the problem with Leviathan is we try to deal with Leviathan in the natural. And these demonic spirits that we've been preaching about, these demonic powers we've been talking about, these rulers Ephesians 6 talks about in the unseen realm. Can I just sneak a peek a -loo? Finally, my brethren. Finally, my brethren. It sounds like a conclusion, doesn't it? It is, in fact, the conclusion to this letter. This letter that started out with the doctrine of salvation explained and then an extended teaching on what the Christian life full of the Holy Spirit looks like. And um, it's marked by, well, quiet submission, husband and wife relationship, parent and child, employer and employee. This is the thrust of Paul's teaching in this letter. Your service as a child of God filled with his Holy Spirit of power is, is a domestic, quiet service. Not smacking down demons, but controlling your own passions, desires, and urges. Submitting to one another to bring glory to Christ. And this is what brings him glory. Not slaying Leviathan, but slaying the Leviathan that lives inside of us. Namely, our own hearts and passions. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. It's going to take his power and might to live this quiet, obedient, submissive Christian life. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. The devil is going to come after you in this context. He's not really going to send an army of sea demons after you. Um, he doesn't have to. He has an ally in your own wicked, deceitful heart. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. Our war is not against our spouses, our children, our bosses. We war against someone else, something else but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. But in what context? In the context of, of Ephesians, in our family lives, in our Christian lives, these lives of quiet obedience and servitude. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand, not fight, just stand. Stand there. We don't fight these entities, but we can stand. We can stand in our marriages. We can stand in our home life. We can stand at our jobs through the power and might of the Holy Spirit. Stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, 
praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Truth, righteousness, the gospel, salvation sounds a lot like uh, doctrine, doesn't it? Isaiah Aquaman uh, Salivar is not a big fan of doctrine if you uh, if you're familiar with his teaching. These rulers, Ephesians 6 talks about in the unseen realm, can only be dealt with in the spiritual realm. We don't deal with them in the spiritual realm, though. That's what Paul said in Ephesians 6. God deals with them in the spiritual realm. We stand here, stand in this Christian life of faith, in the Christian doctrine of salvation. Isaiah has clearly never read Ephesians 6. Any of you in here tonight, you might click out of this broadcast, but what you need to understand is that tonight we are preaching to the spiritual realm. The they should have stayed on the surface where they belong. The Bible says that we preach to principalities, that we preach to rulers and powers. No, it does not. It says we stand. Shall we read it again, Aquaman? And so, guys, as I'm preaching, the word of God is like a sledgehammer to the kingdom of darkness. <laughs> The word of God breaks down hell's gates. There is power as we preach. There is power as we prophesy. There is power as we declare the word of God. But you're not declaring the word of God. D does he not know that? Does he not know what's in the Bible? I don't think he does. And he doesn't care. And the folks who follow this man, they don't care either. Just show me how to beat up that mean old Leviathan spirit that's ruining my life. My life would be perfect if it weren't for that Leviathan spirit. I'd be living a perfect life. It's not my fault there's a Leviathan spirit after me. I'm a good person, really. Got my own righteousness. But these demons, man, they're, they're messing with my good, righteous, holy life. And so tonight, I believe we're going to put the spirit of Leviathan. The Bible calls him a fling serpent. Yeah, where does the Bible call it that? I mean, here's my Bible, and so we might as well. In that day, the Lord with his severe sword. Now, wait a minute. In what day? It sounds like we're picking up right in the middle of a train of thought. In fact, we are in the middle of a song, actually. A song that begins back in chapter 24. It's a song about a day. In fact, the last day. So whatever this is, it's going to happen in the last day. Great and strong will punish Leviathan, the fleeing serpent. Leviathan that twisted serpent, and he will slay the reptile that is in the sea. So Leviathan is a fleeing serpent. It flees like all animals. It tends to flee when you try to catch it. But of course, we know God is not talking about an animal here. He's talking about something else. So what is he talking about? I'm not sure. I think he's talking about Satan himself, but whatever he's talking about, it flees from him, not from us, from God. But we're going to put him on the run because we are going to destroy him. Well, no, the Lord, the Lord is going to do it. We're not the Lord. I'm looking right at it. Could it be that Aquaman here doesn't know the difference between us and the Lord? Some of you say, well, why are you going to spend the next hour talking about him? Because you can't fight something you know nothing about. That's why God didn't tell us anything about him, really, because we're not going to fight him. Do you know how many apostles wrote about fighting the Leviathan spirit? Zero. Do you know how many church fathers or disciples of the apostles in the first and second century wrote about fighting the Leviathan spirit? Zero. Nobody said anything about this Leviathan spirit for 2,000 years. So what, the, the church has been at this creature's mercy for the last 2,000 years? Is, is that what you're telling us, Aquaman? God has left us at the mercy of this spirit for 2,000 years? You can't overcome something when you don't know the strategies. This is Stratego. Or the download on it. That's why Paul says, don't be ignorant to the enemy's devices or the enemy's strategies. For if you're ignorant, he'll have an advantage over you. Ignorant of where Paul said that in the Bible? Aquaman uh, wants you to be ignorant of where Paul said that in the Bible. Uh, but I don't. It's uh, 2 Corinthians 2. What do you mean, biblical? Now, whom you forgive anything, I also forgive. For if indeed I have forgiven anything... I have forgiven that one for your sakes in the presence of Christ, lest Satan should take advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. So this is about forgiveness in the body of Christ. That's one of the places Satan attacks us, remember, in our relationships, in the body, in our marriages, our parenting, and our work. 
just like Paul was talking about in Ephesians 6. This is the same author. Paul wrote 2 Corinthians. He also wrote Ephesians. And in neither book did Paul say anything about fighting no Leviathan spirit. So if he knew about this Leviathan spirit, he apparently wanted us to be ignorant of it. And if he didn't know about it, then Aquaman here knows more than the Apostle Paul knew. These false apostles, man, they, they don't even listen to themselves talk, but they expect us to listen to them. They don't read their Bible, clearly, but they expect us to learn the Bible from them. It's uh, it's unbelievable. So the way that we get the advantage taken away from Leviathan is by preaching on him and teaching on him. Right. That, that's why Paul taught on him so much and Peter and Jesus. <laughs> this is just dumb. It's dumb. It's false. And it's not of God. A Leviathan is in the Bible, obviously, in many different places, but he's pictured in the Bible. I want you to get a picture of what Leviathan looks like, according to Scripture, as a large sea serpent. If you guys saw my flyer, you said, Isaiah, are you being fictitious? And what is that flyer? Is that a dragon? That is a sea serpent. I was trying to figure out how could we get a picture to look like Leviathan. He is a large sea serpent that is described in Job 41. I need to read this more. Now, if you're reading the book of Job like it's some kind of bestiary, then you're missing the point of Job. What's the point of Job? God is sovereign over his creation. Man is not. Check it out. Can you draw out Leviathan with a hook? Now, there are going to be a series of questions God asks here. They all begin with, can you? The answer to all those questions is, of course, no. Job was powerless against, powerless against Leviathan, the actual animal. But Aquaman here says that we can put the smack down on Leviathan, the spiritual being. Uh, so we're, we're powerless against Leviathan, the animal, but we can take down Leviathan, the spirit. Can you put a reed through his nose or pierce his jaw with a hook? Will he make many supplications to you? Will he speak softly to you? Will he make a covenant with you? Will you take him as a servant forever? Will you play with him as with a bird? Or will you leash him for your maidens? Will your companions make a banquet of him? Will they apportion him among the merchants? Can you fill his skin with harpoons? Or his head with fishing spears? You're going to find this over and over and over again. And much of what we talk about tonight is going to be out of Job 41. So if you want to open up your Bible, if that's what you're, you're doing tonight, you can open to Job 41 where the Bible is going to describe God himself is speaking to Job and is going to describe the spirit of Leviathan. Spoiler alert, no, he's not. God asked Job these questions concerning Leviathan. He starts out by saying, can you catch Leviathan with a hook? Can you put a, a, a noose around its jaw? Can you tie with a rope through its nose or pierce its jaw with a spike? Will it beg for mercy or will it beg you for pity? God is describing the spirit of Leviathan. And then no. It's not true. No. No. Uh -uh. In other words, God is telling Job, Job, you cannot deal with this in the natural realm. You can't hook it with a fish's hook. That is absolutely not what God is saying. God is using his creation to teach Job about his sovereignty. Things Job knows about. They have to be things Job knows about. Otherwise, Job would not have understood what he understood. And he did get it. He, he did understand the message God gave to him. The book of Job tells us. But Aquaman here is saying God wasn't talking about the creature Leviathan, but the spirit Leviathan. Now, if that's true, that must have been what he was doing in every question he asked Job, right? All 64 of them. He begins asking these questions in chapter 38. He asked Job if, there, if, if Job was there when God laid the foundation of the earth. Now, was God talking about the spirit of earth, Aquaman? Uh, then he asked him how, how the oceans are contained. Was he talking about the ocean spirit? Then the cloud spirit, the dawn spirit, the light spirit, the rain spirit, the star spirit, the bear spirit, the lion spirit, the raven spirit, the goat spirit, the month, month spirit, the donkey spirit. These these false NAR prophets, they're, they're obsessed with spirits. Anytime they see an animal in the Bible, they think, oh, hey, there's another spirit to add to our bad guy spirit omnibus that we can scare people with. You can't catch this thing in a net. You can't catch him with a hook. This is something that is spiritual, Job. Right, like the ostrich spirit in chapter 39, the horse spirit, the hawk spirit. Today we'll be opening up and playing with some DC Super Friends Hero World toys. We have Hawkman, Aquaman and Vehicle, 
and the flash. And this is something that must be dealt with in the spiritual realm. This is something that must be captured and must be exposed in the spiritual realm. That is not what the writer of Job said. That is not what any writer of scripture said. What he's saying is not in the Bible. It's going. It's not going to help for you to try to deal with these things in the natural realm. Many of you are exhausted even now because you've been trying to deal with these things in the natural realm. You've been trying to deal with anxiety in the natural. You've been trying to deal with depression in the natural. You've been trying to deal with fear in the natural. You've been trying to deal with the spirit of confusion in the natural. And you're trying medications and remedies and therapists and counselors. But God says you can't counsel these demons out. You can't medicate these demons out. But these things come on let's hit share right 850 these things must be dealt with in the spiritual realm it now where did god say that because Job was pretty anxious uh, pretty depressed anyone who reads the book can see that but god didn't say anything about no demon of anxiety or depression or ostrich uh, spirits or any of the nonsense uh, aquaman is uh, saying here essential that we know how to deal with these things in the spiritual realm right so necessarily essential that god didn't tell us in his word he didn't tell any of his prophets this didn't tell any of the apostles this didn't tell jesus this he told aquaman here this isaiah aquaman saldivar i don't believe it <laughs> i really don't call me crazy but i don't Let's take a look at the epistle of Jude, because it talks directly about people like Isaiah Saldivar. God thought it actually essential that we know about them, so he, you know, told them about, told us about them. He tells his children what they need to know. But first, a word from our sponsor. After these messages, we'll be right back. Crispy corn cereal has added new Super Pac-Man marshmallows like me, the biggest ghost chomper of all. Oh, ghost chompers. I'm a ghost chomper too. I'm chomping good part of a nutritious breakfast with me. And me, Super Pac-Man. Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ and brother of James, to them that are sanctified by God the Father and preserved in Jesus Christ and called. Mercy unto you, and peace and love be multiplied. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you, and exhort you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. So obviously Jude thought it was important that they know this, so he, you know, told them. And what did he think was so important that they know? Um, they should fight the Leviathan spirit. Oops, no, <laughs> they should fight for the faith. The faith once for all delivered to the saints. They had this faith. They had the faith and now they had to fight for it. And guess what? The Leviathan spirit was not part of the faith. For there were certain men crept in unawares. Yeah, this fight is not in the spiritual realm. It's in the church, literally. It's against people who wear the same t-shirt, confess the same creeds, put money in the collection plate, help the poor, sing worship songs, all that. Who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness. This is no surprise to God uh, that these men of lasciviousness should sneak into the congregation of his people, slither in, that's what the Greek implies, they slither in like a snake or a serpent or a leviathan, as it were. He says they turn the grace of God into lasciviousness. The word means outrageous, shocking to public decency. It is most commonly translated as sensuality, having to do with the senses. They mix the grace of God with sensuality. They mix spiritual with the physical. Things like anxiety and depression are, are material. They're physical. But these people tell you that underneath that is a spiritual problem. You're anxious, which is a natural emotion, something that happens in the biological body, and they tell you there's an anxiety spirit behind it. They're mixing the physical and the spiritual. That's exactly what these false prophets do. They turn the grace, the spiritual grace, into material sensuality. And denying the only Lord God and our Lord, Jesus Christ. And they don't talk much about Jesus, uh, if at all. I will therefore put you in remembrance, though you once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believe not. God has a habit of separating his children from those who pretend to be his children. 
and the angels, which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. If he did it to the angels, don't think he won't do it to these false teachers. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh, are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Likewise, also, these filthy dreamers defile the flesh, despise dominion, and speak evil of dignities. Yet Michael the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses, durst not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke thee. But these speak evil of those things which they know not. But what they know naturally, as brute beasts, in those things they corrupt themselves. Woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain, and ran greedily after the era of Balaam for reward, and perished in the gainsaying of Cori. These are spots in your feasts of charity. When they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear, clouds they are without water, carried about of winds, trees whose fruit withereth without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the roots, raging waves of the sea, foaming out their own shame, wandering stars to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever.